So the praise team going to lead us, and we're going to work on our spiritual bodies this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy New Year to everyone. Amen. Come on and clap your hands in God's house this morning. Praise Him. Come on and bless His name. Bless His name. Bless His name. Amen. Wave to your neighbors across the room. Hallelujah. That you're here to be a blessing. That you're here to set the atmosphere. That you're here to give God all the praise that belongs to Him. It's a new day. It's a new year. I'm going to give God everything I want to give. Give them some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
us all around you, but we have no reason to fear. Because God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to that. Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what the doctor said, Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what my bills may say, Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what that doctor said, Jehovah has the final say. get in my own mind sometimes and start defeating my own self. This is Lily talking. But Jehovah has the final say. And if he has the final say, I'm going to stand on that. Anybody this morning? God, I Jesus. God, I thank you. Ooh, Jesus. God, I thank you. Ooh. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other. I hear you, church. Reaches. You are my Ooh, church. Yes. Strength like no I can count on you. If you need him right now, pull up and say, you are, you are my. Sweet love. 
experience that strength it I experienced love loss this year but you are you are my strength I had very members of my choir go to glory strength like and I miss them I miss them so much You can't replace that. And it reaches me. I need his strength this morning. How about you? Say it again. You time church say and he found you where were you are in it worship him right there hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Glory to God. Faces in 
here I haven't seen in a while, and I'm saying, Worthy Jesus, you're worthy Jesus, you're worthy Jesus. To our online members, worthy is the name of Jesus, worthy is the name of Jesus, worthy is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's praise him. Glory to God. Come on, help me magnify the Lord. He's worthy. Come on, help me magnify the Lord. Let us magnify the Lord. Let us bless his holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and all your mercy renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Glory, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you can't do nothing but praise him. When every, everything that ran out, and you can't figure your way out, you just begin to praise him. Amen. I wanted to come forward with my deacon this morning. And even if there's some ministers up close, uh, if you would stand up and come up front right quickly. Stand with these deacons. Uh, our new theme, put it back on the screen. As we prepare to go into 2021, very first Sunday of the year, give God a praise for having us celebrate the first Sunday in 2021. His goodness and mercy have brought us to the house of worship for a brand new year. First, the first Sunday of the brand new year, his goodness and mercy have brought us. Amen. I'm led to just pray this first Sunday, moving forward in Christ's kingdom. That's our theme for this year. No matter what obstacle get in your, no matter what trial. You, will, you are going to face the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit has always already determined that you're going to keep moving forward. Amen, somebody. you moving forward. Not in the world, but in Christ's kingdom. I'm excited about this year. I'm excited about moving forward and if I don't stop I'll be preaching about moving forward 
Uh, but to God be the glory. Let's give him another praise in this church today. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Let us pray. Father God, in the awesome, mighty name of Jesus, he who breaks every yoke, the Lord God who destroys every burden, his name which is above every name, we come today, God making a declaration unto you, Lord, touching and agreeing in the realm of the Spirit that yokes have already been broken. Burden has already been destroyed. Hallelujah right now. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord shout hallelujah. Come on, we're going to praise him right now. Glory to your name. Our healer. Our way maker our bridge over troubled waters. We say thank you right now. Thank you for the blood that was shed over 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary. Thank you that when they took you down off the cross, Lord, you didn't stay in the grave. But on the third day, God, you got up declaring you have all power. Come on, church, all power is in the palm of his hand. Thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the power to heal this morning, for the power to save this morning, for the power to bring joy back this morning. Thank you right now, God, power to dry the tears from weeping eyes. Thank you, God, that every demon got to bow to your power. Every warlock got to bow to your power. Every witch got to bow to your power. Every demonic spirit got to bow to your power. And we say thank you, God, because we volunteered to bow to your power because you got power in your hand today, God. And we say thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Spirit, God, move from heart to heart this morning. Move from soul to soul. Move from spirit to spirit. There is no hindering spirit, God, that can stop your word, God, from cutting through everything, God, as under. And we say thank you now. In Jesus' mighty name. I said in Jesus' mighty name. I need the redeem of the Lord to help me call the name of Jesus. Come on, in Jesus. His name is Jesus. Somebody call his name. Hallelujah. Thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we declare that you have dominion and authority over our lives. And God, you are a strong tower a wall of defense surrounding us, a buckler and a shield, God. And we walk here now in the land of the living. And you said, let everything, God, that has breath give you praise. Come on. If you're breathing today, give him praise. Come on, I'm through praying, but I want everything that has breath in this church today that have made it over to 2021, that know that if you had not been for the Lord on our side, if you're breathing and able to stand and give God a shout, then you ought to do it just because God been just that good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I take my seat, I just want to stretch my hand before everyone have my minister, Deacon, y'all stretch in Jesus' name. This is the move, moving forward year. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward to those things are ahead in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Well, repeat after me. I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. Say it again. I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. Who don't want to go will be left behind because I'm moving forward. Now give him a praise. shout praise. I want to before before Minister McKenna come and uh, lead us through our offering, first offering of the year, we're going to amen, our communion today also, we're going to have sharing uh, the communion and uh, first one of the year and we're going to at the end of service, so those at the home uh, give you full knowledge of that so you can be prepared to uh, share communion at the end of service with us. Uh, also, I want us to begin to focus, you know, third Sunday and next month, which is our overtop giving Sunday. Let's give God a shout, pray for it already. The, the overtop giving uh, Sunday, which is third Sunday of February, it's a blessed Sunday. It's a Sunday where we go beyond the tithes and offering and make a sacrificial offering to God. And it has nothing to do with the tithes and offering. It's where we stretch ourselves in our belief and in our faith and give to God. Over the years, it has made this ministry uh, like no other. It has propelled us to do great things. Uh, Propel if whenever we needed um, financial blessing, the seed had been sown so we didn't have to struggle to do the next thing that God wanted us to do. Uh, last year we took the overtop seed, overtop um, seed and we said that we're gonna build the first half of the back of the sanctuary. And that is exactly, that is exactly what we did. Amen. I would say you have no idea how awesome it looked back there. Some of you have been back there, but any member is welcome to go back. Uh, you just have to set it up with Brother Carter or someone in here, one of the deacons, and uh, they will take you upstairs and downstairs. You will be amazed how awesome uh, it is. We have two uh, stories back there, and we're going to put the uh, elevator in there. And if you may have guests who need to take the elevator, and I'm preparing, um, not that I'm going to ever need it, you better learn to speak what you want now. And, uh, but um, it's there. Amen. So we're going to put an elevator in. And uh, that's um, already is in the framework. The elevator, the second half of the back of the sanctuary, uh, we have already, uh, I think we the went to permitting or we'll be going this week to permitting. Have we, go, we already gone into permitting. And so we'll be getting our permits back pretty soon. Uh, we'll go to the steel company. We will have them uh, manufacture the steel, come out, put it up. And all this side, upstairs and downstairs, is going to be for our youth, our kingdom kid, and all the things we were doing down up front. And so it's going to be awesome. They can be upstairs. They can be downstairs. There will be plenty of room. The children will be close to us. Uh, we're going to have it set up so if you have to go back there, uh, you don't have to, you know, go so far. You can go check on your child, whatever the case may be, and they'll be ministered to. They will be taught, and we will be pouring into them kingdom, moving forward in the kingdom. Amen? And so we will finish that up. We're going to finish that up this year. We don't finish up this side. There are more room in the back of the sanctuary, and you see that we're building the um, baptismal pool, it'll be opening up the wall pretty soon. There's more room in the back of the church than you can even imagine. And so we've been building and building. So 2021 is to finish, to finish up 
our youth side, uh, upstairs and downstairs, and so they can have plenty of room for every age. Amen. Now, uh, so that is the goal for our overtop giving this year, to be done back there. We won't have to do anything else back there once we are done this year. Uh, it, the only thing left for us to do in here, later on, put a balcony, balcony in. It's designed for a balcony behind you. And we will need it. Amen. Amen. I declare that. We will need it. Because God is going to continue to pour out his anointing through his word, and people's lives are going to be transformed. Miracles are going to happen. And when miracles start happening, and lives are transformed and salvation, the lost are saved, they go and tell others. Wherever there is the presence of God, there will be growth. Amen, somebody. There will be growth. So get your heart and mind prepared. Uh, and ask God, because we always, let me want to say this, this ministry always does what we say we're going to do. Here's something we don't do, and this, no, this is no slack on anyone else. We don't put up a sign saying future building, and then you come back 20 years later, and that sign almost fell down, and there's no building. We say we're going to do it and we get it done. And I think that's one of the reasons you're motivated to give. You see the work and you see where your seed goes. So prepare your heart because God is gonna give you back much more than you plant. So prepare your heart for third Sunday in next month. Third Sunday, the third Sunday in February. What type of seed you will give this year to finish up the back of the sanctuary. And I'm already making the decoration because it's scripture. Jesus said, no man has given to me anything that shall not receive a hundredfold in this lifetime and also that eternal life. So, uh, yeah, pray about it. We'll have envelopes coming out second or third Sunday, but pray about it. Have your mind made up. And once the Holy Spirit makes your mind, make your mind up what you're going to do, don't let nobody talk you out of it. And don't you talk yourself out of it. Because if God puts something on your heart, that's why I never tell people what to give. I say the Holy Spirit is going to tell you. And uh, wherever it is, obey him. And you can't go wrong. Amen. Give God a praise for what we have planned. Amen. All right. As we prepare to give, I'm going to ask the ushers uh, if they have Pastor Bless envelopes. We also want to remember that today is Pastor Bless. So if you need an envelope, the ushers will walk around and hand them to you. As we stand, um, I just want to just give the Lord a hand clap of praise because what, when you go from a trailer to a trailblazer or a single wide to worldwide, or Florida power to universal power. It's all been because of the power of giving. All of because of the power of giving. So we're gonna we're gonna say our tithing pledge for the first time in 2021. And let's pour into it, y'all. I am a tither, and I support the kingdom of God on this earth. I believe that the Parkview Christian Life Center is doing kingdom business, and therefore I plant my seed in great ground that it will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life. I have no time for doubt or doubters. I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessings of Christ shall overtake me and the favor of God shall find me and my cup shall run over. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's seed time. Amen.
Father, we are thankful for the permit that you have given us to build this kingdom on your word. We thank you for those who are able to give. And we thank you, Father, for the power invested in us through giving. We will continue, O Lord, give you all praise and glory and pray that these offerings and gifts are used to the intended purpose, the upbuilding of your magnificent kingdom. It is in Jesus' perfect name that we pray and all of us together say, amen. Praise the Lord, church. Let's put our hands together all around this building. Amen. Are you anticipating and exciting about the first one, 2021? Amen. Come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. Amen. To set the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. For the first Sunday in 2021. Amen. I sent a text out to the praise team and said, 2020 is one for the books. Amen. 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 We've learned a lot. Amen. We've had to truly, truly believe and lean and depend on him. Amen. And now when we get to that season age, we can tell our grandchildren, I know what it is to lean and depend on him. I've been there where somebody's been here who was a part of the Great Depression or the polio vaccine, but we were part of the pandemic that happened here in America and all around the world. And we're saying we're still leaning and depending. Anybody's leaning and depending on God right now? Hallelujah. Glory to God. The scripture says the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. And I shall not want. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. Come on, for a few seconds, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Glory to God. We worship your holy name. As the word comes forth, oh God, let it germinate, oh God. Let it take root, Jesus. Let us apply it, oh God. Let us share it with someone. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. Our E church members, our online members going to worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you. We love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Defender behind me, defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. See, I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. I won't fear. I won't fear. All around the room, we're going to shout hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I am not alone. Say he's my comfort. Say he's my forevermore and even in 2021 he always guides me he always guides me through mountains and valleys say through mountains and valleys his joy is refreshing his joy is refreshing what does it do for your soul restores my Hallelujah. 
say mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness. Oh, Jesus, say it gives me assurance. Gives me assurance. That I'll see his glory. That I'll see his glory. So I will walk in your peace. 
Come on. Your spirit lives in me. My victory. My victory. So your spirit, God. No matter what's going on around me, I'm still going to walk in his peace. Yes. Say my victory. My victory. It should have been me, but your spirit And it could have been me, but so I will walk in your spirit is Say my victory. My victory. time all around the room say he's my comfort he's my comfort always holds he knows. come on bless him right there all around the room as we prepare for God's word this morning I'm seeking God's word this morning I need his word this morning like the ocean needs the river like the desert needs the rain as the deer panted by the water, so my soul panted for him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. our praise team get settled in I want us one more time just put down whatever you have in your hand I know y'all ready for the word and you got your Bible and your pads and all those things but one more time let me tell you something on Palm Sunday everyone say Palm Sunday they tore down palm branches that's why they called it Palm Sunday they cut it from the palm tree and as the Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on the back of that donkey, they threw down palms in the road. So even the donkey feet wouldn't touch the ground. And they were waving the palm branches. And they were shouting, Hosanna, hallelujah, to he that come in the highest. I don't want to wait till Palm Sunday to put these palms together. Come on, put the palms together. Give him glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Let the redeemed of the Lord come on. Let the redeemed. One more time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo, Jesus. I don't care what is facing us. We are moving. Come on. Come on, church. Forward in Christ's kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, put your hand on your own forehead. You know, if you've been born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Inside of you, you have power and authority. And sometimes you can't wait for somebody to lay their hands on you. You got to take your own hands, put it on your own forehead, and declare victory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. 
we go into the book of Genesis this morning and in Genesis chapter uh, 1 this morning, we're going to look at verse 26, Genesis 1 and 26 this morning. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to read from the 26, 27, and 28 verse going back to the origin, the beginning of things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You know what? I can almost just spend the rest of this service saying thank you, Jesus. And I mean that. We have so much to be grateful for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Glory be the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let me start reading because I'm in a praising moment. I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood to praise Jesus. I'm telling you. Woo, Lord, I'm in a mood to give him glory, praise, and honor. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil, I'm going to read this scripture in a minute. The devil hates praise. The one thing he hates is for you, for us to praise in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something, the devil will never join in. He won't join into a praise service. He would not join in to a praise service. Amen. He like those uh, people on Shark Tank. You ever watch Shark Tank? When you start praising God, the devil say, I'm out. <laughs> he out. He will not join into a praise service. So the next time he is messing with you in your home, and you want him to leave, just start giving God praise, and he'll say, I'm out. He's out, because he can't stand praise. I promise you I'm going to get to the scripture. Listen. Listen. The next time your money look funny, and your health ain't lining up, and maybe people talking about you, don't complain. Just start giving God praise. And the devil will say, I am out. And Jesus' present will come in. Glory be the God. Glory be the God. Woo, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Glory. Woo, hallelujah.
Y'all keep on praising him. Let me, let me say, let me say this before I preach. Watch, let, look, look. I want to say this. Even if you're at home watching, I know you got your dance on. <laughs> Whoa, we serve a mighty good God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. All right. All right. If you think, if you think, if you think praise is the best thing you can do, wait until the word comes. The word is, the word is bread indeed. Hallelujah, Lord. All right, let's read, let's read, let's read. And God said, and God said, Genesis 1 and 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over, over, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and should do it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living creeping thing that creepeth up, uh, that moves upon the earth. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach this morning, living, uh, living out God's image, living out God's image. That's right in line with moving forward. You may be seated in the presence of God, living out God's image. Come on, say it with me one more time. God's image. Now, the image of a thing when it comes to God, when God made us man in his image, meaning that God said, I'm going to make man like me. Get that now. He's not just putting an image or imitation of something. <laughs> you know, I think about sometimes if you don't want the real thing in the world, they have the knockoff brain. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's not the real image or the real thing. It's not like the thing. It's called a, say it with me, a knockoff brand. Now, some people walk around with the knockoff, knockoff brand as if <laughs> they have the real thing. A knockoff brand is something similar look like the real thing, but when you test it, <laughs> and you put it through the test, you'll find out the quality is not there. Sometimes they even steal the name of the brand, put a symbol that looks like the brand. And if you wouldn't know it until testing time comes. Thank God that when God made us in his image, he didn't make us knockoff brands. Somebody shout, I'm the real thing. Woo! Jesus. When God gave us through the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of our Lord, when he gave us the Holy Spirit, 
He didn't, the Holy Spirit is not a knockoff brand. We receive the power, the original spirit that God himself has. The same spirit that dwell in God dwell in us. Jesus. That's why the devil trembles when a Christian walk in. He know the real, the original power and authority that God carry and the son of Jesus Christ carry, the believer carry also. You are and we are in the image, the very likeness of God himself. God said, I'm going to make you just like me. I'm not going to make you uh, any less than I am. You will have me. Well, how did he make us like him? He had to put his spirit in us. He had to make us like him. When he first made Adam, Adam uh, was not designed to die because God can't die. And to be like someone, you have to be like them. So he's told Adam, you will not die because you are like me. And then he gave him a commandment not to be disobedient. He did. But uh, let me tell you what happened. When Adam became disobedient and took of the fruit, we did not lose the image. We were separated from the image. We were still like God made like God, and God looked at us, he said, now since sin has separated you from me, I'm going to send a redeemer. Right. That's right. And the purpose of the redeemer is to put you back. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Come on, church. And give you back everything the devil has stolen. I'm going to redeem you through the blood and put you back in power and authority. You and I are living after the cross. If you're born again, you, we've been redeemed, put back in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. There is power inside of the believer. It may be untapped power, unrecognized power, unused power. But let me tell you, if you're born again, you have the authority and the power of God residing inside of you. Someone shout, I am, I am blessed today. I am, I am above, above and I'm not beneath. I'm not beneath. I, am I am the head. I am not the tail. I am a lender. Even though I don't see the money, God called me a lender. So I am a lender, and I'm not a borrower. That's important what I just said. You call yourself what God called you. you when, when you're made in the image of God, Lord Jesus, help me here. When you're made in the image of God, you speak. like the image you are. You don't talk about what you are in the moment. You talk about who you are in Christ. Watch what God does. When God give Adam an opportunity to speak, he says this to Adam. He said, Adam, I have given you dominion. I have given you power and authority. Now, Adam, open up your mouth and speak a thing. And whatsoever you call the thing you speak, that is what it going to be. Jesus, help me here. Watch, let me say it again. God said, Adam, the first thing I want you to do is learn how to speak. And this, what I, this is the reason, I'm, this is how I'm going to teach you how to speak, Adam. There won't be no debate. 
You don't need a second opinion. Adam, you speak with authority. Your daddy spoke with authority. When I said, God was saying, when I said, let there be light, Adam, it was. When I said let the uh, water separate from the dry land, Adam, it happened. As I spoke, you are my image. You got to learn how to speak like your daddy. Y'all better give God praise in here. I don't want you touching no one, but I want you to say it loud. We got to learn how to speak. Talk like your daddy talked. You are like him. You are in his image. You never heard God talking down. You never heard God talking in a depressing way. Whenever God wanted something, those things that he called was not as if they were. He looked at Abraham and he looked at Sarah and he said to them, you're going to bring forth a child. One is 90, other one is 100. God said, don't matter about your age. I call things in existence by the words I speak. Yeah. Hallelujah. An image, when you realize you are image, you talk like who you are. Yeah. Ah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to announce to the world the visions that God gives you. Not your vision, but when God show you a vision, don't be afraid to announce it. Call it. Your vision that you call supposed to be confusing to the hearers. <laughs> when God tell you to do something, it's supposed to make people doubt because it came from God. But what God needs is somebody bold enough not to try to downsize God's vision to satisfy unbelievers. Are you bold enough to say what God has said? Are you bold enough to say to people, God said like Noah, it's going to rain. Yeah. Rain. Yeah, God said it's going to rain. And he said it for 120 years, no matter who didn't believe it. You're bold enough. See, the image of God is not walking around trying to satisfy doubters, people with uh, no vision, no hope, no desires, no goal. When you walk around as the image of God, you are not trying to get second opinions of other people who really don't know about God. Ah, look, say it again. I am blessed. And I'm in the image of God. Watch God. God, God said to Adam, he said, call it. Just, just open up your mouth and call it. I'm going to bring you every creeping thing, every fowl, every beast of the field. When you call it, I'm going to put them in an assembly line. And when you call it, they got to keep moving. Yeah, all right. If you want to call that big old tall thing an elephant, keep moving. If it don't want to be an elephant, you said it's an elephant. It don't have to, it's not in debate. You called it. You are the, in authority. Keep moving. If that slow-moving turtle don't want to be a turtle, if you call it a turtle, a turtle, keep on moving. It might want to be a rabbit, but it ain't a rabbit. You call it a turtle. Someone say, keep moving. What is God saying to you and I? In his image, you call yourself blessed, and everything that not blessed got to keep on moving. Come on, said, I'm blessed. And everything that not coming my way that look like blessing, you got to move. Whatever you say, that's why you got to get away from people who can, who can control and who can uh, manipulate 
your opinion. I shared with you a while back that God had me in this before the pandemic coming was coming, had me in revival up in Georgia. And I told someone, I said, never downsize your vision. Never let people downsize your vision so they can finally say, I believe it. When God give you a vision, it always going to be some people want to downsize it. You got to know that you know what God done said to you. Listen, I was out walking one night. This is when we was in construction of this sanctuary. This is not a major town. This is a small town. This is a humongous church for Haines City and a great ministry for Haines City. You don't have to go to Miami to have a great ministry or California, New York, wherever the presence of the Lord is at. There will be liberty. Somebody give him a shout. Listen, it's not where you go, it's who go with you. And if God go with you, he do great things where he plants you. So in this small town, God has given us this vision, and the vision is bigger. Now I'm going to keep on growing and growing because God has given vision. So I out walking one night, give me a little exercise in, and nobody, you know, it was some guys talking. They didn't know it was me walking by. And God didn't want them to know it was me walking by. So I'm just out there walking, and I hear their conversation about this sanctuary. And they're talking about, you ain't, like, why are you talking about it? Why? Because the vision seemed to be too big for a small town. But I wasn't listening at the town. I wasn't looking at the town. I was listening to God. God said, call a thing. Come on, church, call a thing. So I'm out walking, and, and they're talking. And I heard the conversation. The conversation went like this. You seen what Babers is out there trying to do? Now, first of all, Babers ain't trying to do nothing. <laughs> Preach now. Right. Got not, a, a Baber has too much sense to try to conjure up a vision and then support a vision. The vision must come from God, and he's looking for somebody bold enough to speak what he said. Don't be foolish to try to make something happen yourself. So first of all, you start off wrong. See what baby, no, baby ain't trying to do that. So I, I went to walking a little slow so I can hear a little more. <laughs> Slow down my walk. Right. It was their conversation, but it was my business. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. God wanted me to hear what people, like, like Jesus said, what, what, what is man saying? God want me to hear what the, what the community was saying. And they said, he act like he out in California. No, California too little. We are moving forward in Christ's kingdom. California? California? No, this not act like he in California. California? When God speaks of something, he don't want you comparing it to earthly places. God will give you a vision so big in Haines City, and then the first thing the devil try to do, well, that never happened here. That's right. God always want to start something new. God can get ready to heal your body in a supernatural way without a doctor. He can get ready to supernatural heal you, and if you ain't careful, you'll miss the healing because it never been done that way before with you. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that God can speak one word over your life and supernatural healing can take place? As a matter of fact, I want somebody to say, yes, Lord. I believe that you can supernaturally heal. So watch it. You got to start speaking those things. Hallelujah, somebody. Like God, I receive. Look, look. It, it is much better to speak like God. Again, do the downsize your faith so folks can be happy. So they kept talking, and I slowed down the walking, and next thing you know, uh, this is the last thing I heard him say. 
he will never, see, it ain't me again, but they say he will never finish that building. Well, we done finished it in Jesus' name. Done built some more in the back in Jesus' name. About to build some more in Jesus' name. About to, one day gonna put the back in the end in Jesus' name. And then the next thing God says, we gonna be ready to do it. Why? You are in the image of God. Ooh. Watch what they, watch what the disciples saw one day on a boat in the middle of a storm. They watched Jesus get up because he knew he was God. He was in a human body, the Holy Spirit, the God wearing human flesh, and he knew it. Listen, Jesus was wearing human flesh, but the Spirit of God was in him, and he knew it. I need to say it one more time because somebody will get it. Jesus had on this same flesh that we wear. But what he knew that, that he has the Spirit of God in him. He knew it. So when by knowing it, watch what he does one night, one day on the stormy sea. He stands up on the bow of the boat. Somebody said, get bold, get bold, say get bold. Watch this. Jesus stands up. Now watch this. You are in his image. He stands up in the bow of the boat. He looks at the wind blowing and the water raging, and he says, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and the water got calm, and the disciples began discussing among themselves, what kind of man is this? that he can speak to the wind and the waves and they obey his voice. You know what Jesus was saying? You don't understand. There are going to be some storms in your life and the wind going to be beating against you. You got to stand up in the midst of that storm, open up your mouth and tell the storm, peace. You be still. Oh, I need somebody in here today. Watch it. You ain't, you are not broke. You just don't have enough faith to speak yet. That money is coming to you. Oh, oh Lord have mercy. You are not, look, 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 God wants you blessed. Boy, I want to take this pole and sling it. Listen, listen. You are not broke. It just not have, have appeared to you yet how God wants you blessed. Once you understand that blessings, blessing glorifies him, <laughs> Lord have mercy, you will quit doubting and receive blessings in abundance, not for you first, but that it will glorify God. This is why a lot of people can't get financial blessing. They got their plans. All you thinking about a new house, new car, a little bling bling on you. God ain't thinking about that house and car and bling bling. What God is trying to do is glorify himself by pulling you out of poverty, putting you in prosperity, that you may give him glory. Once you understand, he wants you blessed. We are his children in his image. If a billionaire have a child that has nothing, it makes the billionaire look bad. Because the billionaire image is out there begging. Y'all ain't hear me preach. He said, how can I be a billionaire and I got an image, my own son and daughter begging? So the billionaire says, 
if you just come to yourself, get out the hall pen. You don't have to beg for a ring back on your finger or a robe back on you or shoes back on your feet because when you come back, the first thing that the father said, he said, listen, go kill the fatted cow. The boy don't deserve it. What you mean he don't deserve it? I am who he is. And he is who I am. When I bless him, I'm blessing myself. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Somebody give God a shout, pray. The reason God want to bless you, y'all ready? The reason God want to bless us is not because we deserve it. I wish y'all please get it. Jesus said, listen, if you were to ask anything in my name, my Father would give it to you because he want glory. He's not trying to make us look good per se. God want to bless you so he look good. Some of y'all are like, Lord Jesus. God has said, don't you know you are my image? Not only do I want you to look good, I want you to walk in your identity. You need to look good and you need to walk in your identity. You don't flee from devils. You don't run from demons. You don't shake because of witches and warlock. You are the son of the living God lives inside of you. You don't need a whole seance and 50 people to run out one demon out of your home. You are in the image of God. In his likeness, you tell that devil he can't stay. Man, I feel like preaching up in here. Someone shout, I'm blessed up in here. I am in the image and the likeness of God. Come on, say it with me. Say, you ain't looking at no knockoff brand here, baby. You looking at the real thing here. Power and the authority. You're looking at somebody in the image of God. I'm not broke because my God shall supply all my needs. I'm not sad because he's my joy. I walk in the peace and authority of God because he is my peace. If you're waiting on, listen, watch this. You want to mess up the devil in 2021 and everybody who walk in his, in his demonic spirit, every time you down, start giving God a praise. He inhabits the praise of the saints. People love the world. Love to see God's people complaining and mumbling. Because it's the opposite of who God is. That's why they love to see you mumber and complain. It is the opposite of what you're supposed to be. I wish, uh, and I mean this, I, I'm saying this for you, but I, I wish it too. I wish a trial might show up. Right. Come, on. Come on, say it again with me. Come on, say it. I wish a trial might show up. Lord, come on. I need somebody on this side. I'm gonna warm, y'all gonna warm up the whole church. I wish a trial might show up. See, y'all ain't talk. Listen, I wish a trial might show up. We don't start having fun till trials show up. Jesus show out in trials. I wish a trial, come on, quit crying about trial. Come on, say, I wish a trial might show up. Y'all ain't got it yet. Y'all ain't got it yet. I wish a trial might show up. The trying of your faith work at patient. Let patient have a perfect work that you may be entire and wanting nothing. I wish a trial might show up. Until y'all get it. See, I'm bored until a trial show up. 
I ain't got nothing to do until a trial show up. I'm sitting around like, Lord, when is the next trial? Amen. Paul said, we rejoice in tribulation. Oh, y'all, y'all like, no, pastor, don't be preaching that. Well, I need to preach it because a trial coming one way or the other. You might as well get mentally, emotionally ready for the next trial. Tell the trial, come on. I got something to put on you. It is not medicine from the CVS. It's not medicine from Walgreens. I got something on you that the world don't have. It's called the blood. B-O-W-W-D-B-L-O-O-D, the blood. Somebody shout blood, blood, blood. I got my VIP card. Victory in praise. Come on, somebody. Somebody, come on, let's take a few minutes to show our VIP card. Victory in praise. Y'all ain't praising him. God saying, don't you know, you my image. He said, let me bring something before you. Call it, that's what it's gonna be. He said, now I have given you dominion. Someone say dominion. dominion. God said, I gave you dominion. That means you are to dominate. You are not designed to be dominated. You are created to dominate. How dare drugs and alcohol dominate a child of God? and take away vision and purpose. No drug and alcohol were designed to dominate you. Get that mess and tell it, put it under your feet. Hello, somebody. Notice something God didn't say. I love how God talked. He said, Adam, I created you male and female, and I have given you both dominion. He said, dominion over the fish, over the fowls of the air, the creeping things that creep upon the ground. You have dominion over every beast of the field. That's what I gave you dominion over. He never mentioned once, I give you dominion over each other. He said, no human was ever designed to dominate another human being. You only dominate other things, but you're not designed to dominate another human being. Why are you wasting your time, man trying to dominate a woman or a woman trying to dominate a man? You ought to be walking in the image of God in his likeness and let God have victory in your family. Your biggest problem, you want to be in control, and God says you're not in control of another human being. You ought to have dominion over yourself and let the power of God. A lot of times people trying to dominate other folk don't, can't control their own life. Round, listen, brother, running around here, God said, when I gave you my image, I didn't tell you to get all swole up in the chest, walking around here like you rule somebody. My image is humble, meek, and mild, and power at the same time. Can I preach to you? If a man got to use his muscle to dominate a woman, he don't understand what it is to lead. You learned that mess from some men's and your uncle and them pimps in the street. You didn't learn it from the image of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Because he walked in power and authority and people automatically followed him. The image, male and female, I gave you dominion. And I don't know why the moon always trying to dominate the sun. You know, in the Bible, the, the Bible, when it was peaks, when Joseph was having a vision of the moon and the sun, he was speaking of his mother and his father. So the Bible, the moon and the sun. <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes he Women, y'all trying to dominate the man. God ain't tell him to dominate you. Yeah, I know y'all want to clap like that. You got a little, you got a little, you, 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 
you're, you're clapping like I said something wrong. Come out there, yeah. No, no, God ain't never called. His image is not a dominating spirit. Amen. God ain't tell the man to dominate the woman. You just spending so much energy in the wrong dominion. You got to understand what God's saying. You are speaking spirit, and that should be unity, you, you, union among you. Watch what he said. The both of you are called to dominate. It's a shared dominion, but not over each other. I hope I'm going to set some women free today and men. There are a lot of women, they want to dominate. They don't, they don't, a lot of them don't dominate with physicality. They, you know, but they know how to get it done. <laughs> let me get, let me move on from this. Let me say this, because we got community. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. The greatest joy in the world, ladies, is when your man become a man. Y'all, that's the best y'all can clap on there. <laughs> when they become a man, not to dominate, but to lead and take the burden off your shoulder, you realize I will never desire for this mess in the first place. Hallelujah. In God, image. See, and likeness, God never told human beings to dominate. See, there's some evil demonic spirits out there. Well, a human being, certain human beings, certain races of people think they are superior. God never put a superior race on earth. That man made. Ain't no superior race on earth. God, it would be unjust, unfair of God to make one race superior. That means he don't love all his children equal. This dominion where people try to dominate some people, whether it's race or whatever, is man-made. And some people have bought into it. Can I preach this day? Listen, I don't care what color somebody is. I'm not sub sub servant to any race. Because God never made us that. So, so in, when I look at myself, I see image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you one crazy thing I did one time when we were a teenager up in Pensacola. It was crazy. I don't know why I did it no more than uh, I just thought I belonged. Just thought I should be down there. So the baby, I was teenagers. We went to Pensacola, and we went, you know, after her mom and dad went to see whoever they wanted to see, we got the car and started driving around. And as we were driving around, we went down by the beach. And I drove by and I saw all the latest model cars, the, the BMWs and the Mercedes Benz and the Bentleys and this big old beautiful house that went down by the beach. And for some, some reason, I just thought I belonged. We were driving an old Ford Galaxy. Huh? Uh, it was a good car, but it was a Ford Galaxy. Now, I ain't trying to say nothing about the car, but it was a Ford Galaxy. In my mind, amen, somebody. That's where I belong. So I told her, baby, she, we she no more about 17. I told her, baby, I'm going down there. She said, it looked like a private party. That's the club I belongs to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Born again in that private car. And I, and I so, so I, I parked the car. She said, you really going down there? I said, yep. I wasn't dressed right, but I was dressed right in the image, in my mind, in my heart. 
Amen. No matter how you dress up on the outside, if you ain't got it here, you don't understand who you are. It's what you have, the image of you in God. And so she said, you going? I said, yeah, you going with me. She said, no, I am. I'm not going. I said, yes, you are. I've been able to talk into doing things, I'm telling you. And I said, yes, you are. And uh, she said, oh, and I grabbed her by the hand. I said, come on, girl, let's go. And she was kind of walking like this here. I said, look, look, look. You got to walk like you belong. Come on here, somebody. Y'all, do y'all get that spiritually? Lift your shoulder up. Lift your head up. You are a child of God. You got to walk like you belong. I told her, I told her, no, don't be walking like that. Walk like me. Walk on down there like you belong. We walk down there. Remember so well? Walk down there. In the midst of them people, they were looking like. <laughs> they didn't want to say nothing because of the confidence that I was walking with. I went over to the hors d'oeuvre table. Because my God prepares a table. <laughs> the present. Amen. So finally, one guy got bold enough. He walked up, he says, uh, Do you have an invitation? Now, I didn't say this, but I wanted to say it. I wanted to say, Yeah, I invited myself. I didn't. I said, no. I said, no, I don't have an invitation. I don't have an invitation. He said, but, so he said, the party is for people who only has invitation. He was so nice. When you walk like you belong and you have the right mentality, even folks who would normally be mean realize this person got it going on. I got to show some respect. So I said, no, I don't have an invitation. He says, uh, well, it's just a private party. I'm, I'm looking down at that beach. I'm looking at people. I think it was a wedding or something. Wasn't it? What? Wedding, yeah. And they down there. I said, looking down there. Like, I always just go take a dip in before I could. <laughs> but I, I, was, I was nice because I said, no. He said, well, uh, I said, well, okay. He said, but before you leave, <laughs> would you like to take some with you? And I did. <laughs> I may have not been invited, but I went into territory I wasn't invited in. And I didn't leave out there empty handed. I'm trying to tell you today that God will send you in places and you will not leave out empty handed. Somebody give my God a shout praise in here. I, I got to find a place called, listen, listen, listen. When you understand who you are, you will come from hanging with the buzzards. Old story about a baby eagle chick. Got dropped off among the turkeys. And the turkeys raised the eagle So all that little eagle chick knew, he was a turkey. Lost his image, lost his identity because it was hanging with turkeys. And so they were walking on the ground, pecking like turkeys and gobbling like turkeys. But they noticed he had different wings. He noticed that he had different claws, different eyesight, different skills, but he could never use it because he was raised by turkeys. He wasn't a turkey. He was in the image of an eagle, but he had a tur turkey mentality. Sometimes Christians been hanging around too many turkeys. 
And you don't know that God have made you like him. So one day, an eagle was flying high and looked down and saw that eagle now grown, hanging with turkeys. So the eagle swooped down and went down over to the eagle that had been hanging with turkeys and began to flap his wings. And the little turkey eagle realized that he had wings just like the image that was standing in front of him. And after a while, he, he did this and took off and the little turkey eagle went to flapping his wing and he took off. After a while, he, he just followed him around. And then watch this, when the, when the eagle that was training him got, got ready to eat, let me tell you something about eagles. Eagles don't swing down on dead stuff. When eagles get ready to eat, they pick their menu. Maybe a rabbit today, maybe a fish today. Amen, somebody. And he taught the eagle how, who he was. And the eagle began to flap his wing, realizing all of my life, because I was hanging with turkeys, I have missed out on who I am. The devil came in the garden and stole the identity of who God made man. Along the way, we start acting like turkeys. Turn down, turn it off. Along the way, we start acting like turkeys. But one day, an eagle got put on a cross. Y'all give God a shout praise. I mean, really give him a praise. Come on, magnify him with me. He was put there to restore us back to who we are. They put him on the cross. He died. Took him down. Third day, he got up. On the day of Pentecost, like a mighty rushing wind, he sent the Holy Spirit. And everyone that believes in him, you are, the Bible only mentioned two or three uh, animals. He mentioned a dove, an eagle, and the main one he mentions is a lion. He talked about doves, eagles, and lions. I feel like closing with the lion. They say the lion is the king. They call it a jungle, but he's in the safari. The king of the jungle. Why in the world is the lion the king? He's not bigger than the elephant or the hippopotamus. He's not faster than the leopard or the cheetah. He's not stronger than a whole lot of animals. But how in the world he is the king. He shouldn't be the king if he ain't stronger and faster. Well, what makes him the king? His mentality. The lion is the only animal in the jungle that everything is on his menu. <laughs> Come on, give God a prayer. See, everything is on his menu. He, he, he will attack an elephant, a giraffe, a water buffalo. He don't care what he is. When he get ready, he, he has the mentality, I may not be the strongest, but all y'all on my menu. <laughs> well, the giraffe is not going to try to eat another animal. The elephant not going to try to eat another animal. The lion walking around saying, I might eat you. It's the mentality of the lion that makes him the king. And so with that mentality, he roars 
in the jungle and his roar put every animal on alert. Boy, I feel this day. So he go around sometimes. He, don't, he ain't ready to hunt. He just roar to keep everything on their toes that I might hunt. His mentality. What God did when it came to you and I, he said, let me tell you what I did with that devil called the roaring lion that's trying to put fear in my people. I took him and I made him as a roaring lion. And he only can seek out the one that allow him to devour them. Shout again, I'm blessed. And I have a roar that will put the demon on alert. Now that roar is hallelujah. I said that roar is hallelujah. Give God a hallelujah shout today. I declare that when you start talking, speaking it, God says you're bringing it existence. Somebody say 2021 is going to be my best year ever. Say it again, 2021 is going to be my best year ever. No, no, no. Mm -mm. See, y'all saying it, some of y'all saying it, but you ain't grasped that you got to say it in the midst of whatever going on with you right now. And you got to mean what you say because I want to see things come to pass in your life like never before. 2021! going to be my best year. Good things coming my way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You, you belong. You, you belong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You belong. Hallelujah. God have put you in the VIP special club. You belong. I wish your trial might show up. Yes. Yes. Let me give you this, I'm done. I was out fishing, and you know what I was saying? I wish a fish might bite this cult. That's why I feel, this, me and, me and uh, yeah. Mayfield. Brother Mayfield were out there fishing one night, right? Amen. And, and uh, both were blessed. I wish a fish might bite this cult. I wish a trial might come. Come on. I'm getting everything out of the trial. Right. I, I know I'm preaching to you. Come on. Quit crying in them trials. Amen. God sent them for your victory. Right. Jesus, thank you. Father God, in Jesus' name, you call us into dominion. not of each other, but to dominate everything that come against us in our lives and to walk in shared dominion where we come together and dominate everything that's not like you. Thank you, God. Nothing dominated you. When you wanted something, 
you spoke. When you wanted two fish and five loaves of bread to turn into enough to feed and multiply a, mo a multitude of people, and you spoke. When you wanted Lazarus from the dead, from the grave, you spoke. And God, we leave here today knowing that we're through talking downwardly. Everything in our lives have been designed for purpose, and we're going to speak life, speak life to it. In Jesus' awesome, mighty name, let's give him a shout praise. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to stand together. The opportunity to give your life to Christ is before you right now. Is there anyone that has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior? God is calling you now from darkness into the marvelous light that you may walk with him, that you will walk in his kingdom with joy. And in Jesus' name, if that be end of the day, that have not given their life to Christ, I want you to boldly say, first Sunday in 2021, I'm coming down. I'm giving myself to Christ. I want him to be my Savior, Lord of my life. Be bold in Jesus' name. If you're not a child of God yet, he wants you so much to know him and the part of your sin. If there's someone here who said, well, I'm already a child of God. I want to be a part of this local ministry. You can come boldly just as you are. Be a part of what God is doing. Watch God operate in your life like never before. So if there be any that's coming off Christian experience, already a child of God, you can come off. You can come too. Amen. If there be any today, God is waiting. God loves you so much. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, let's prepare our hearts and our minds today for our communion. For you that uh, already have your communion cup, uh, if you don't have it, hold your hand up. The usher will bring you one. Lift your hand up high. We're going to take communion together first Sunday of the year. Put me back on screen so I can bring those in uh, at home. Hallelujah. All right, those of you that are at home, we're about ready to take our first communion of 2021. If you need a cup, by all means, get one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before Jesus came to live within us through the Holy Spirit, this is what he was talking about. He took the bread, don't, don't eat it right now. He took the bread as he was about to illustrate the power of the Holy Spirit, and he says, this bread would be my body, meaning that he was going to be in us. The bread is going to become a part of us. And Jesus said, it's my body in you. Then he said, the blood will be the blood of the New Testament. It's for your salvation, for your redemption. That's why he took the cup. That's why he took the bread in the upper room. He wanted to demonstrate the Holy Spirit being within us. So he said, before the Holy Spirit came, he said, let me illustrate to you what I'm about to do. He said, this bread is my body. He said, as often as you eat it, you do it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. The bread, it's in us now. And we're in the bread. He said, the cup is my blood of the New Testament. And often as you drink it, you drink it in remembrance of me. We're part 
of this cup now, and the cup is a part of us, Amen. representing our blood. Amen. And often as you do this, Jesus said you do it in remembrance of me until I, in my death, until I come again. Amen. Hallelujah. And we give him praise for it. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Give our God one more praise for this afternoon, this morning, the afternoon now. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have uh, Minister McKenna come and close us out. Um, looking forward to walking in the victory of Jesus. Is there anyone, I'm going to do it the first Sunday, anyone for our first time here, first time being with us this morning, your very first, oh, God bless you, both of you. Amen. Anyone else? First time, first time. Lift your hands if it's your very first time. Amen. That's it. We have uh, just the two. You've been, you've been here before. All three of you? First time? Just, oh, okay. All right. I'm going to have Minister McKinney. He's going to come, and he's going to make sure y'all leave here with a blessing. Ask God blessing upon your lives. And uh, thank y'all so much for choosing to worship with us today. Looking forward for you coming back over and over again. God, don't make any mistakes when he bring you to his house of worship to give him praise and glory. Amen. All right. start at the end. Just do it in a minute. Jane Allen, Cleveland, Ohio. Rodriguez from Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. Sean Tucker, Ocala. Savannah and I live in Florida. <laughs> Sean Johnson, Ocala, Florida. Brianna Weatherall, we're from Chicago. Isaiah Weatherall, from Chicago. Y'all do? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Keep talking, baby. <laughs> is, 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 is our daughter back there? 
stand. Yeah, stand up for a minute. I'm going to tell you, just stand up for a minute. Well, when she was, I'm, I'm, you sit back down now. When she was small, you saw, see when she was small like this little girl? Boy, she was daddy little girl. I mean, everybody go daddy, 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 daddy. Boy, she got an eight by 16. And I talked, tell her what she can't do. Then she was mama girl. <laughs> Bless you. Amen. Love you, God. God bless you so much. So happy to have you. Pray that y'all just um, uh, come back again and again. God has purpose and uh, for you, you and your family. So God bless you. Love you, God. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. All right. If y'all would follow those in the red, they're going to make sure you get taken care of. We have a little gift for you. I want everybody to make sure they say hello to Savannah. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand and prepare to have our clothes. And we're going to, sometimes you just don't want to go home. You know what I mean? It's so good. The word has been spoken. Amen. Amen. Thank you.